Okay, good morning everyone. Today we will go through your pit stop 5, question 1 and 2. So uh, please uh, get ready your textbook. Okay, the question is, describe an account for the characteristics of the equatorial climate. I have put out the uh, suggested answer. So let's take a look at the question. Let's break it down first. Okay, first portion you need to understand that this question has two parts. First part is describe, second part is account for. So uh, for this such a question, you have to answer the description first. What you are seeing now is the description for a climograph of Singapore in 2019. Please take a look. Singapore is in the equatorial uh, climate zone. We have relatively high temperature. It is about uh, on average more than 27 degrees Celsius uh, throughout the years. Okay. The temperature range okay, uh, for 2019 is actually uh, higher is 29 and the lowest is 26.7. So it's about 3 degrees Celsius. In the textbook, the temperature range is uh, uh, stated as 2. You can follow the climograph there. And what you saw in the climograph is the rainfall portion is represented by the bar graph. The bar graph. It is typically quite high okay, and there is rainfall throughout the year. There is no distinct wet and dry season. What you are seeing here in uh, July to sept uh, September here is um, only relative to 2019. Okay, There seems to be very low in rainfall. But for the other years, Singapore generally had a high rainfall also during this period of time. Whenever you are describing the climograph, okay, whether it's equatorial, monsoon, or even temperate, please take note there is two data that you must describe. First one, the bar graph which is represented by the rainfall. Second, the line graph that is represented, uh, that is representing the temperature. Whenever you are attempting this type of question, please take note, you must always start with the description. Okay, description. You can choose to answer whether the characteristic be it temperature or rainfall is your choice. But in this review, I'm using the I am using the temperature first. So please take note, you must describe the equatorial temperature characteristics first. Okay, for example, here I have listed down, uh, it's a high temperature of about 27 degrees Celsius. The annual temperature range is small, about 2 degrees Celsius. You must use data to support your description. Next, you must follow by account for, which is like explaining, giving reasons for the temperature that you have described. So here, after you have described the answers, okay, whether it's high temperature with the data temperature range, you must give the answer right away. Do not give the explanation in another paragraph. This explanation must follow right after your description. So equatorial temperature has a high uh, temperature of about 27 degrees Celsius. This is because high solar angle. Sun rays is more concentrated around the equator. This causes more heat to be experienced in this zone. You may pause the video now, okay? Refer to your textbook, page 150 to 151. Read the segment on latitude. Latitude. Zone B represents the equator, okay? At this zone, this is where Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, okay, where we are. So at this zone equator, solar radiation um, is shining directly at the equator. The solar angle is relatively high. It's about a perpendicular, 90 degree. Okay. So here the, the sunlight is concentrated at this zone. So it will be more uh, heated up. Imagine you are playing with a torchlight. You are shining it directly or you slant the angle. Okay, Just like a car's headlight also. Well, at the temperate region, okay, because the, the curve of the, the earth, okay, the sunlight is spread out over a region. So compared uh, zone A and zone B, zone B is relatively small and receive concentrated sunlight. Please take note, the sunlight, okay, the amount of heat, the light ray is the same. It is the same. It's just that because of earth's surface, okay, at the equator, we are facing it. Uh, perpendicularly so it seems that we are uh, co more concentrated here in terms of the sunlight the, the solar radiation 
The next major uh, component that we are going to describe, it is the rainfall. Okay, the rainfall of the equatorial climate. So equatorial climate, they actually experience high annual rainfall, okay, typically more than 2000 and M. And there is rain every month. There is no distinct wet and dry. Okay, it's quite even out. In the textbook, you can see that the uh, climograph shows a even monthly rainfall, relatively even, except for the year ends. Okay, so here you have to describe the characteristic followed by the explanation. Followed by the explanation. You may pause the video now. To read the textbook page 155 to 156 to read about convectional rainfall okay before we go on to question two which is on comparison okay now let's look at question number two refer to figure 3.37 and 3.39 compare the precipitation pattern of equatorial and monsoon climate take note the command word here is compare and the keyword is precipitation pattern we are only going to look at the rainfall of both type of climates. I have created a 2012 rainfall bar chart okay, for equatorial, which is on the left hand side, and a 2012 rainfall bar chart for a monsoon zone. Let's take a look at how to compare the precipitation patterns. Now, let's look at what we call distinct wet and dry season. If you observe, the rainfall for equatorial is relatively every month there is rainfall. The lowest is 50 mm okay, uh, for the month of June. However, if you observe here, you notice that there is very low or new rainfall okay, January to April for the monsoon climograph. The June to August have very high rainfall. This is what we call distinct wet and dry season. Distinct wet and dry season. This is the characteristic of monsoon climograph. There is a high rainfall in June to August, followed by there are certain months that has very low rainfall. First comparison, we can look at January to April. Okay, so for equatorial climates, there are high rainfall. Okay, there is considered high rainfall. Monthly, there is rain. But if you look at monsoon, January to April, there is typically a low rainfall. Okay, from zero in January and then less than 50 up to April. So this is the first comparison, a uh, differences. Okay, this is a differences. Second comparison, let's look at monsoon. Okay, the highest rainfall is in June to August. June to August. However, in the equatorial, if you observe June to August, we have a relatively low rainfall. Okay, low rainfall. Lastly, let's look at equatorial. Towards the year end, okay, we start to have an increase in the rainfall. However, for the monsoon, there is a gradual decrease okay, in the rainfall where it starts to become a dry season. 